Well, Ken, you're just about to get into the river and um, we're on the Tyne section of Bywell Beat, adjacent to Miller's Hut. This is Miller's Hut Pool, a very famous piece of the river. Um, I'm sure that you're excited and you want to get fishing, but before you do that, there's a very important process you need to go through here. Yeah, well, it's really important and people think that we exaggerate the time we spend, but we don't exaggerate it. We spend a good bit of time actually trying to think out where we're going to land the fish. So if you're going to go fishing on a catch and release basis, it is really important that you have a good idea where you're heading for if you hook that fish. Now sometimes it doesn't work out because the fish beats you and you have to think on your feet, but it is so much easier to actually have a plan in mind, either in terms of bringing the fish straight in or bringing the fish back up to it. And we have a lovely short, very uh, concentrated beat here at the moment. And just at the tail end then, we have a series of rocks. And what you'll find is just in front of the rocks, as the floods come down, they generally scour out uh, a nice little um, a pocket just in front of the rocks. And generally that's what I'll head for. So you want to be in about maybe knee depth of water. And even for a very big fish, the body is covered completely and the fish is fine. And as I mentioned earlier, lapped in the net then, fine once he's facing in the right direction. The key of course is to get it into a nice calm bit where there's not too much flow so that you're not fighting against the current, the fish isn't you know turning over and thrashing around in the net so it's nice and safe and everything's nice and calm. The issue I think most people will face is that this activity when you hook a fish, a big fish like that, you must be so excited you know the adrenaline will be pumping, you've got to make yourself calm down a bit here and take that responsibility and ensure that that fish that you've managed to hook is well looked after. I think that's a really important point because um, if you're a, a trout angler and you're used to catching fish of a pound or two pound weight and a two pounder is a really good fish if it's a wild trout, um, if you hook something that's seven times that size, really you do get so excited everything goes out of your mind but as long as you take just reasonable care and take it gently you'll be able to manage this process fine. So it's not something that's highly sophisticated, it's only common sense after all but we'll try and give people a few tricks in terms of how to get that fish back in in the very best condition. Well, this is the Miller's Hut pool then. Um, just show us your approach then. So you're going to enter the water, you're going to have a little look around. So tell us exactly what you're doing and where you're planning to, to land this fish that you're hopefully going to okay. get from the Miller's okay. pool. So I'm going to enter the pool just, uh, just above us here. Again, I've been advised to do that. Um, the water in the Tyne is surprisingly dark. So I'm going to use my wading staff, which is always a good idea. I'm afraid I'm almost wedded to my wading staff. I use it even when I'm trout fishing. And I think as you get a bit older as well, it's no harm to get into that habit because it gives you such a sense of security when you're out there and you're wading you can tell everything that's around you so I'm going to wade out there gently just up to maybe knee depth and I'm going to fish down through the pool now earlier we had a look at the pool and we actually saw some fish moving so we have some idea where the fish are so they're approximately halfway out and I can see some curls in the water which I presume are rocks so I'm assuming somewhere near where the staff gauge is where we can see the gauge for the water height somewhere around that is probably a good taking zone if I happen to get a fish in that area then, ideally, what I can do then is I can move across the face of the rocks and then I'm in the little pocket water that I mentioned. You can just see the reeds coming up where obviously the ground is a little bit softer. I'm going to move the fish in there and then hopefully we'll be able to land the fish. There's still a bit of movement in the water, still plenty of oxygen, but it's definitely out of the rush of the water and can easily recover. Nice and calm, all pre-planned. All ready to go. All we need now is for the fish to oblige. <laughs> Isn't that always the problem? Thank you.